Hi, it is I, John underscore Silva underscore, your favorite streamer. And today we have Keo asking, all right, all right. So my question is related to rendering. How does this guy render so realistically? Is it the lighting, texture, or something else? So short answer is he is not rendering anything. He's photo bashing. But the long answer is, yes, he's rendering. And I'll show you where the render goes. But the short answer is he's not rendering because a lot of it is um, not uh, painted. So in the high res photo or it, in the in the high res uh, image um, that you provided, the way you can find out if someone is photo bashing or not is it's it's in the details because something can look photo like and it can fool you very very easily. Um, and another thing is uh, I'll just get into it. Um, you mainly want to look at the details, things like the armpit here, right? The armpit is just like, it's way too intricate, uh, for it to be like painted and it's intri intricate, um, throughout the whole thing. And also there's different resolutions. Another way you can tell is by different resolutions per area that the, that you paint. Um, now this guy does a really, really good job. Uh, this person, I really like the image. This is not a critique, by the way, this is my, we're not, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. I'm just saying, how can you tell that it's a photo or, or not? Uh, for example, like the hair, um, the, 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 the pixelization of everything per, uh, uh, per photo, for example, the skin versus the, the corsets versus the uh, resolution of the feathers versus the resolution of the skirt. I'd say the skirt is the most painted thing. Um, and then what he does, uh, I will be, I, I got some images here on the left. I will be doing my own thing to show you how to uh, get the same result. Um, and also you can see that he uses texture brushes. So like the background, he either 3d rendered or used a uh, photo or multiple ones. Uh, and then he used the texture brush, like for the blood in here. Um, and he did the same or just w did manually the blood here. And that's an, that's another thing that will stand out as something being photo bashed is, um, the, the texture. And the things that you paint, if you're not careful, will really stand out that they're painted. Another thing is that these photos have a little um, edge to them. This is something I would be very, very careful with blending um, the the combination of photos. Although I think, I don't know if this is the, the face of the real, like this is the real face of the original picture or not. I would say that most artists tend to change the eyes, nose and lips like differently. So it looks like a different person to avoid any sort of issues. Um, and I think like the corset, I don't know if this is a real corset or not. Um, this could be like an image warped or, or changed into a corset. Uh, I'll be doing that myself and I'll show you what, what I would do. Um, and, uh, how else? What what else do you? Yeah, um, another thing you catch on uh, whether something is photo bashed or not is is the disconnection between some parts and intensity of the the light. So when the light looks very um, when light when the light isn't very uniform throughout the care th throughout. Uh, a character, um, you'll find that, for example, this picture here was uh, definitely the, the artist has changed the light direction or manipulated or intensified it. I'll, I will be doing that and showing you as well, but definitely that was something that has happened. He, he changed the main light direction, uh, and, or, or, and, or added more, uh, lights, which I think he did on the right side. Um, 
and then I, I'm pretty sure he added some rim light here. Um, and again, you can tell you can tell that's the case by the by by um, what's the word I used before? Consistency throughout the the other lighting. It's just it's very it's not very. Um, I got gotta be careful. This is not a critique to the artist. Once again, I'm very sorry if anyone feels that way. It's just I'm I'm just looking from a from a. I'm putting my goggles of like okay, I'm 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 seeing all the little like incons inconsistencies, you know, because zoomed out, uh, if you're not really looking for it, it looks great, like it's amazing, and even if you zoom in, it looks great too. This is a great image, um, but there are definitely some inconsistencies that uh, you can tell between photo versus um, uh, painting. So now. How do I how how do you replicate that? Now that we have established the whole rendering uh, question, I took a couple of uh, I didn't take these photos. I yoinked them from Pinterest. Um, sorry to anyone who used this is just educational purposes. Sorry, if, like I don't know I don't know who took these pictures. I'm sorry, main. But uh, the main picture will be this redhead in the center. And I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna go ham on this. I'm gonna, my goal will be to replicate the same as in, I'm gonna change the light direction. I'm gonna add light uh, and I'm gonna combine two photos. So the left one and the right one. So the left one, I just want, um, honestly, I, I just wanted the arm. So I'm gonna yoink that arm. That arm is now mine and no one else's. Yoink. There you go. And now she has a little arm, right? Now, if we left the arm like this, that's another thing you got to be careful with, with proportions when doing uh, photo bashing. That is the number one thing you can tell whether someone is photo bashing or not, other than like the line quality. It's just proportions of arms and like lenses and all that, right? So this arm looks tiny here but it's fine because i just need the hand and the rest and you're not gonna you're not gonna see the rest so it'll look fine the moment i crop it around here because the perspective matches uh, closely right there and of course you want to this is a decodes which means that i'm not gonna be sitting here for an hour uh cleaning this whole thing up i'll just try to do as good of a job as i can to show you some of the things I would do, some of the tools, some of the adjustments I would use to um, mimic that. All right, a little bit of warp action. All right, a little, little, little bit of warp action, huh? I'm gonna, where is her chest? Right there. I'm gonna sort of like put that there. There you go. Tiny is cute, cute arm. Okay. <laughs> so it looks really off right now, but we're going to be changing the light direction or matching. So here's another thing you can do. You can either match the, you can pick one photo to match your whole lighting together, or you can change the whole, uh... no, actually what I just said is exactly it. Pick one photo to match the whole lighting. So in this case, I'm going to use the, the, the main one here. So I'm going to have to change this arm. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're, we're going to change the temperature of the arm. Uh, and also you can turn this black and white. This It'll, it'll be very uh, helpful for values. But first, I'm going to use a hue. One second. I'm going to use a hue saturation um, right there. And we're gonna try to match, so match the environment. So it's a little bit of green, it's a little bit uh, desaturated due to her com complexion, right? So I just made it, um, yeah, made it a little greener in the shadows, as you can see here on the hand, and made her paler, and it's already way better. Right. Another thing you can do. There's so many ways you can do this. There's a, uh, I think it's an adjustment called match. Uh, where is it? 
It's been a while since I've done this. Match color. So it's under adjustments, image adjustments, and then match color. And what you can do is you can select the layer and match. Oh, fuck. What's the name of my layer? Uh, the photo is layer 589. So layer 589, 589, there you go. And now the the um, like photoshop tries to match the the layer the hand layer to the um photo layer right the the, the portrait and you can change the luminance if you want to uh it should help i don't know why it's not well oh there you go fade fade is working there you go so you, you could do a little bit of this Color intensity, maybe it's too intense, less intense. Uh, and this can help with that. And you can do a combination of those two where, um, there you go, luminance. I could do this or go back. Yeah, this, this is pretty okay, actually. I could do this and then go with the hue saturation. I think that it's a little too saturated still and needs to be a little green. So there you go, and that's another way you can do it to match to match colors. Um, I have so many layers because uh, silver the silver decodes a layer. It's got all of the other decodes in it. Um, so now that the hand is better matched in color, the values aren't really helping here. So what we're gonna do is. Um, Oh, first I need to decide whether the photo quality is the same. So you see that this hand here is a little more like pixelated than the face, right? You want to avoid that because like I, I amplified it, I made it bigger. What you usually want to do is actually find the same resolution photos throughout so that this doesn't happen. But in case of this happening, you can uh, sharpen, I think. Wait, no. Yes, you can sharpen tool could help but you could smoothen and sharpen it as well we're gonna try two two things here sharpen might make the pixels look even more pixelated it helps a little bit okay so what i like doing is uh, i'll show you something is i duplicate the hand layer and i'm gonna blur it with gaussian blur i'm gonna blur it a lot hold on so this gonna blur it quite a bit like that and I'm just gonna erase in the detail areas like the creases of the hand uh, just just areas where it's just way too blurry like where the bone picks out stuff like that and now I am gonna merge the two layers and uh sorry not not merch i'm gonna let me take the layers here i'm trying this by the way this is a long process photo bashing isn't like that fast so i'm trying to rush here um so this is the blur layer and i'm gonna this is 100 percent opacity i'm gonna just lower it down a little bit and merge the layers and now make another new layer set it to in this case i'm going to set it to soft light and you go to filter other and high pass so here i'll just show you blim blam bloom boom filter other high pass so once you have that on your and you have your your soft light hand Selected filter uh, their high pass. This is like a more refined way to sharpen your image All right So I could go like really crazy with it or even change the Here we go That's that's a little too crazy All right, let's go with that 
and it just very subtly uh, sharpens your hand. It's just a better way to sharpen, I think, uh, generally speaking. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna, you, you can set it to, so soft light will give you a softer effect. Uh, actually overlay here might be better. Overlay since gives more contrast to the hand, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna mer merge, uh, clip this and merge both. And now that's the first treatment I would do. Again, the image on the left is not ideal for this, but uh, it was the first thing I, I got um, and I didn't want to spend way too much time on this. So what I'm going to be doing now is I guess I'll keep my, let me do, let me, let me make it so that you guys can see both. All right. So let's hide the girl on the left and work on this hand a little bit. So how do you get two images to have the same lighting? Uh, so, and that's what we're going to be doing. Um, first of all, identify, the better you are at identifying light sources, of course, then you're going to have much more success at it. Um, but uh, I like to use, in the, okay, so every every photo is different. So in this case, my hand is pretty, the, the values between light and shadow are pretty big. So I want to, if I turn my image black and white, you see that the hand looks way darker in the shadows. So we can open control L and use our levels to lower down the contrast of the hand so that it seems to match a little bit better. And the, the light on the hand in some areas are way too bright. So I'm going to do the same there. And this will be, and then we're going to manually change the lighting direction. Uh, so I'm just kind of like eyeballing it. Maybe I want some of those. Ah, uh, it's, it's kind of fine how it is now. Some areas are still too dark, like the tip of the fingers, but I think I mainly look at where I'm, I'm looking at where the light has almost no chance to get in there, you know? Uh, I'm not looking at the tip of the finger where it's touching like close to the collarbone or whatever. Uh, so I'm just, I'm mainly looking at this area here. And I'd say that is, okay, it's good enough for uh, now going in manually and changing the uh, light setup. So you might want to, <sighs> every layer works a little different. But the usual ones I use are uh, overlay, soft light, hard light. So these three, um, and these these all three do the same except at different intensities. And I will also use either a color dodge or a linear dodge at some point. Um, so we're gonna go with. I always like to try soft light. It's a bit of a trial and error sometimes. So soft light because it's soft and I'm going to bring my, oh my God, I'm running out of, there you go. So here are my colors. Um, so we, we, this finger here is way, way too dark. So I want to see if with the soft light, yeah, with the soft light, it'll work. I have a, a soft brush as well. And I'm going to identify the shadows of the rest of the picture by going, okay, so she does have like a warmer tone due to her skin complexity. So she's like a, a redhead, uh, at least appears to be porcelain like skin. So I want uh, the brightest color with a little bit of little bit of orange in it. And I'm just going to do the same for like the shadows here of the finger. And of course you want to be careful with only affecting the shadow area. There's multiple ways you can just only affect the shadow area if you want as well. But I want to show you the hard manual way if you're not like super into Photoshop. So first take care of the shadows. Um, so I'm going to do exactly that. And then you can um, apply the ambient occlusion once you've done like the first sort of like pass to it. 
Um, so this kind of like match, all right? And um, now I need to make, so the skin here, it's kind of bright. The hand needs to follow, follow the same. So I'm being very careful with adding it in there on top of the hand. Of course, the more you know about form, etc., you'll you're gonna have a way better time with with this. But now it's time to add the shadows. So the shadows tend to be like a like a actually I'm in in a, in a good place, kind of like a brown. Like that, yeah, yeah. So you see like under the under the skin, it's kind of like that. So the very deep shadows, just for the hand. Of course the hand needs to affect the chest as well, which I'll get into. I guess it'll, this will be a longer video because photo bashing, explaining it is like, takes a while as well. And uh, also I'm just gonna go, no, that's too much. Um, I'm just gonna add, the warmer tones to where the crease of the fingers and everything are, but I'm gonna go with the colder tone for the shadows on the hand. So like, you see like there's a little bit of blue and purple in some of these areas. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of trying to get there. You know, kind of, kind of try to match. Um, I guess I could color pick and see how it works. Not not bad. But this is already way better than what we began began with, right? So, I'm going to make um I'm not going to make anything. I'm going to continue to just Actually, I'm kind of becoming obsessed about this. Happy little shadows. Damn right. Um Oh yeah, the tip of the thing finger needs to So, a little a little colder and then here the tip of the finger and everything else needs to be brighter it's too bright all right okay cool so this is already way better and it fits way more. Now, it still kind of looks off, especially where the finger is, because we need to change more. Uh, I'm gonna go with... Uh, da -da 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 -da. You could go against soft light, but I think hard light might be better, because it's gonna do a bigger change. So if I really want blue, it's blue. You know, it kind of overrides the, uh, under, like, the under layers. So I'm going to actually color pick cold color here. And I'm, I want to blend this finger and the shadows of it. Uh, actually, hard light might be too hardcore. Overlay layer. Yeah, overlay look, works a little bit better. Uh, and I'm looking at the transition of the colors. Uh, maybe we want something warm to be or cold. Now warm works works better. So I'm diminishing, I'm going through the, I don't know if you can tell this on stream, but I'm going between where the light and shadow is, I'm expanding the light, right? Just making the, 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 the so that the finger gets more light, that's pretty much it, and the hand too. And here, that's pretty much it. And I guess you could, uh, if some areas look too soft, you can re-photo bash um, those areas. This looks a little too warm. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. I, I want almost the finger to, oh, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. I want, I want the finger to almost like blend onto the skin because a lot of her features are like, there's not a lot of contrast other than like the eyes and the nose and the corner of the mouth. So that means that the ambient occlusion is like, big boy here. It's the big boy in here. And there you go. So this is, in my opinion, already close. Uh, I am gonna uh, start moving faster because I don't want the video to be an hour long. 
but I'm just gonna do some quick adjustments to the hand. There you go. So this feels like it's a lot more in light here. And I'm very careful with the way I'm I'm like applying the lights too. And I'm gonna call it there. All right. Uh I mean I'm gonna call it there for the hand. Now for the girl, I'm gonna go with uh, multiply and add the shadows. So now, what you want to be careful with is, the moment I apply shadows, you see there's like that little band in there, that's because of my bad job at uh, cleaning up the edges, uh, which I, th I feel like the image on the right could, could have benefited more when we zoom in, but it's still okay. So I'm just gonna go here, sort of like do that. And now, where's the multiply layer? Here. Just erase that. And let's add. Now, when you add shadow and stuff, it needs to have a little bit of uh, texture to it. So I like to always use a texture brush. Otherwise, it's just like way too soft. You know? Let me... Whoa. I also think I'm doing a, like... A lot more than than I should, but I kind of wanted to show you guys take this opportunity to show some of the photo bashing uh, stuff that I would do, and uh, that will match the image on the left. Of course, it'll never be a hundred percent because you actually need to spend time doing this, and I'm not gonna be here for two three hours. But you do need to match the. Uh, Shadows here. All right. And now the hand has a little bit more of an ambient occlusion and feels a bit more like uh, in line with uh, the rest of the body. Although the finger... All right. I think I'm just gonna go with the normal brush and kind of like paint over with the normal brush some areas of the finger because I really would like this finger to blend a little bit more into the skin because there's a lot of areas in her that feel like that. There you go. Okay, cool. Um, what else? What other techniques to do? Oh, the last thing is I'm actually gonna merge all the layers. I feel like I could benefit from some warmth. There you go. A little bit of red. I'm using a color balance. So I just like take the mid tones and making them a little red. Take the highlights and make them um, maybe a little bluer. There you go. Now we're matching a lot better. Now that we have uh, our adjustments just a little bit and I want a bigger transition for the hand so I'm just gonna do the hand here and one more thing and one more area but you would do what I'm doing to the hand you would do to everything pretty much that's why I'm showing you spending time showing you all of the steps here uh, it's because of that right now I'm just going with a normal brush over um, there you go. So, um, the last thing you want is to, because after rendering, re-rendering and doing all the stuff, you will always, 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 always want to apply a little bit of, uh, noise to your photo. Otherwise, it, it, that's why some areas look painted and other areas don't. That really helps, um, uh, add noise 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 no that that's a lot of noise you want it to be very very subtle uh and uh, how do you change the size again it's been a while since i've done this okay maybe do it monochromatic yeah that works so i'm i'm just it's like 1.05% you know you try to match it and the same the exact same you would do to like the the actual photo here, you'd want to 
if if the resolution isn't high enough, you'll want to so to remove any um, pixelization. So you want to soften the whole image, then resharpen, go through the whole process that I did for the hand, and then once you add the exact same amount, so like 1.0 or 0. Point like 80, um, it's like subtle, but it's in there, you know. And it starts matching with everything else. Because I do think that some of the pixelization is like too high. Um, but now we added a hand to the character. Um, and what you want to do, of course, I could go in here and make another, a new layer. I could stop the video here, but I'm just going to add a little. I feel like she looks a little weird without any, any sleeves or anything. So I'm just going to add that in there for just it. Just, just to have it. All right. Um, that's not part of anything. I just it's kind of felt weird that there was no sleeves in there. Um, okay. So uh, now I have another picture here. Oh, I'm gonna change. Oh, I should have changed the. Okay, I'm gonna add some lighting. Fuck, this video is already pretty long. Uh, forget about the the little parts that I was gonna add here. Well, where, where is it? This thing here, honestly, I would do the same that I did to the hand anywhere else. You just take the, the part and you form it to whatever it is that you want, whatever you want to add it to the to your design, etc. But this is already getting like pretty long, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just change the lighting because changing lighting in photo in photo bashing is the hardest thing to do. Like even this little hand, I already took like quite a bit of time in it and it honestly isn't perfect yet. I wouldn't consider this, this hand done, but I showed you the steps to, uh, it's, it's pretty much rinse and repeat until, until it looks like it belongs in the image. Um, now changing the light for the character, for the main thing. So if I want, uh, I'm going to replicate the same lighting. Um, I'm actually going to merge. No, I'm not going to merge anything. Um, let's do the same that it's in here, but on this character. So first thing is, whoa, not that. First thing is new layer, set it to multiply. And I'm going to create a gradient. All right. So also I should select the character too. So I'm going to use this. Uh, where is it? Trying to look for the tool. Dude, only working in Procreate is like, oh, there you go. So I'm just going with the, the selection tool to have, it, it just needs to be rough. Nothing like too concrete. Blah, 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 blah. Just something like this is good enough. I'm gonna hide selection. And now on my multiplay, Multiply layer, I'm going to add, I'm going to do the same effect, right? Because I guess that's what you're looking for as well. Or at least as far as lighting goes, that's probably what stands out the most is like the soft, like epic lighting going on in here. Oh shit, I do need to, oh, there you go, over everything. Um... All right, so this is again multiply uh, the color that I'm using. Oh, you don't need the layers. Uh, do you need the layers anymore? You, I'll just put them on the side. I guess colors are more important right now. Uh, so multiply layer still, and uh, and you. It's pretty much just like painting in general. When you once you add it. Uh, you see that there's some, the the areas between light and shadow, the, it is called the Terminator. He, I think he enhanced it. I don't know if it was part of the photo or not, but it has that look, so I'm going to do it here. Uh, I'm going to go like around the areas where light meets shadow. And I'm going to erase areas like here, because uh, I'm going to utilize this as the lighting for the hair so i'm just erasing away the okay so there's no there's no trace of of multiply here on the hair um 
There's two light situ situations going on here. There's a back light. There's three lighting situations going on for this character uh, on the right, which is um, back lighting hitting the head and everything else on the right. Uh, fill light, which is a cold, soft light on her face and, and center. And then we have this rim light on the left side, which honestly, I don't know where it comes from because the environment isn't... That's my, if I were to critique this image, that would be honestly my only critique is that the, the lighting on the arm comes from nowhere. Uh, I don't really understand that. But uh, other than that, the environment should have hints of where your lighting comes from. And um, and uh, again, multiply and my multiply is relatively warm. Because the character on the right is, is warm. I think I'm going to go even warmer. So I'm going to lock transparency by multiply and just going around and making it a little warmer in areas that are already, in, in the areas that are already applied multiply. All right. Um, so we can go even darker. And maybe this time bluer. Uh, that's a little too strong, a little too, too purple. So I'm going to keep going. So that was the first step, and uh, I'm still on the same multiply layer, or you know what? I'll make another new multiply layer and continue and do the same thing in case like I fuck it up. I, at least it's not, you know, it's not over. So I'm going to go around uh, with a soft brush first because she has a lot of gradients going on. And I really want to give a uh, darker silhouette against the background for the character first and then we'll add the 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 other lighting so just going around making sure that the hair looks separate from the background the hand honestly looks a little too bright right now so i'm going to darken it too so slowly but surely you see that it belong it, it, it looks like it's belonging in the same picture um of course the more time you spend on it the better and uh, okay, for now, uh, for this step is good. So two multiply layers. Step step one, blap. Step two, deeper shadows and like other more defining uh, areas. Actually, the forehead is a little too defined. All right, and now I'm actually gonna merge both multiply layers and I'm going to erase a little bit. So you can do two things. You can either erase the multiply layer to add light because you already have the light underneath, or if you want a different tone, so it looks like she has like a colder tone. Um, I'm going to make a new light. Uh, let's try. So usually I would use linear dodge for this. Let's actually try linear dodge first. Yeah, actually linear dodge uh, works well. So with linear no dodge, you want to use really dark colors because linear dodge super affects how everything goes, uh, how how like the whole the whole image. So you want to go really really dark, and I'm just going in with uh... actually this is too blue. It needs to be a little. Do it more purple, I guess. And I'm going and outlining areas. So she has like a, the light hits the cheek right here. So I'm replicating the same, but like a mirrored version of this, right? Kind of hits the cheek in there, uh, which makes everything warmer a little bit. And then there's like the the nose. Actually, the nose is, goes a little bit here under. Um, the corner of the eyes are actually quite dark. And then here the cheek again would get some of that in there. Ch uh, chin gets quite a lot of it. Um, lips. Lips too. Uh, and then the neck a little bit as well. The hair. The hair gets it as well, although it's more like a cold blue than than a warm blue. So I'm gonna go a lot colder for the top of her head. I'm I'm gonna feel some of the light in there too. 
like I'm pretty much just drawing that and erasing where uh, I feel like it's you want to be careful to not paint over the the actual shadows or the the, the very dark shadows because then it just looks like it looks weird when that happens uh, so I'm gonna add this here add that there and of course where you apply things is based on your knowledge of form and light so I really can teach you that here is just you know my experience against yours kind of kind of thing uh, if you're better than me uh, or you have bigger knowledge then you'll have a more accurate result All right so I'm adding I'm doing exactly the same here and I'm just going around and applying it throughout so it feels like it's like it matches you know okay a little bit uh where the eyebrows are under under the eyes all right so we're getting somewhere with this um so I'll show you before and after. You'll see where, where the direction is going uh, with this. Also, there should be some here too. And of course, the eyes get the same. And now, once you have the ambient light done, we're sort of uh, established. Let's do it a little bit here. It's a little too crazy. Once you have it established, now we're going to add the actual bigger impact, which is a uh, new layer, linear dodge, uh, again. Or it could be color dodge too, but I th mm, actually maybe color dodge will, would work better here. Yeah, I think color dodge works, works a little bit better here. So she has like a yellow light hitting in there. Like a warm, or just a warm light is how I would... That's too warm. Now, of course, she's a red head versus a blonde, so the effect will vary. But I think I picked something that's nice. So I'm going to build it up first. Um, there you go. Wait, that's a little too intensive. So I'm going to build it up first, and then we're going to do another pass for like areas that aren't being oh I think it's because of my oh sorry it wasn't being affected because of my uh, selection so now that I don't have the selection I can actually get in there and start adding these things you know so like the eyes So you'll see how like slowly it's matching, but I, I still can't compete with like the amount of hours the artist spent in there versus this decode. So please uh, allow me some slack. <laughs> I am trying to do this as fast as possible. I think these eyes are a little too crazy. I'm gonna do a quick selection for the eyes so that I can like apply some of that light wait that's way too warm we actually need a cold light to the eyes a little bit like that and then here and I'm just gonna erase where it's kind of like too crazy and continue right there And then you can choose like the intensity of it as much as you want, obviously, but I'm just gonna go ahead and give an overall glow. I feel like my light is way more saturated. The whole image is way more saturated than the one on the right. So my light, because of the underlying colors will be more saturated uh, as well. 
And of course you always want to erase where you feel like it's a little getting a little too crazy. And I think we could go darker with the ambient occlusion, but this video is already super long, so I might skip some steps. Um, so I, what did what did I already teach? Changing lighting, adding lighting. Uh, is there anything else I'm forgetting about? A little bit more here to her face. Um, well, let's continue just around the the hair, anyways. All right, so. You'd want, um, so you'd want another photo, I'm gonna do this manually, but you would want another photo of hair and use that photo of the hair as a color dodge. So you'd have like all these little hairs like popping out, but uh, I'm not gonna spend time doing that. But that's the way you'd, you'd wanna go with it. Uh, so you like, Take some of the hairs and you kind of like just pop out, pop them out like that. All right, uh, what else is there? Uh, fill light, uh, edge light, we added. Uh, I'm just gonna. So this photo naturally has already another edge light, so I don't have to do that. Um, I'd say this is it. I mean, you can keep you can keep going and making like the the main light. This picture overall is very soft looking, but if you want to make it, uh, I'm gonna merge everything actually. Uh, blah blah blah. So this is one image, and of course you can do the same thing that I mentioned before, which is take this picture, set it to overlay, uh, filter. Go to filter, other, high pass, and then give it a very, very faint. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get this pretty much the same effect as uh, the picture on the right, especially if I will make it the portrait as small as the other. About. So there you go. Blah, 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 blah. This has been another uh, Silva Decodes. Of course, you need to spend a lot more time with the effects and everything else, chat. But I hope you learned uh, something. Sorry, the, the, the episode was way too long, but this, there's just no way to cut it shorter. Um, thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next Silva Decodes. Goodbye. Thank you.